Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Paris. Great to be here with you both. Um, it's a very exciting panel for, for me and for the firm because we've had a thesis in crypto, we've had a thesis in the creator economy, and it is really exciting to see these worlds really starting to converge. So let's just get into it. Elizabeth, we'll start with you. Um, give us a little background on Lightning and what attracted you to the Lightning Network, and uh, we'll take it from there. Well, yeah, it's really exciting to be here. Thanks so much for having us. Um, so I've always loved music and the creator economy. In fact, Latif, when you and I first met, we bonded over our mutual love of electronic music, uh, DJs and whatnot. And I'd always wondered why wasn't there- By the way, Paris and I also bonded over that separately. Oh, I love it. Yeah, we all can bond around these issues. Um, so I'd always wondered, why isn't there an easy way on the internet to say, pay a musician, a DJ, a you know videographer, creator, uh, money globally, anywhere around the world, natively. Why are there all these intermediaries, middlemen that take massive cuts? If you're international and you're not, say, you know, here in the US, why is it so difficult to transact? Like if I have a musician that I like, why can't I just send them, you know, 50 cents or a dollar easily on the internet natively? So that was something that I had thought about kind of before uh, the world of Bitcoin. And when I first discovered Bitcoin, to me, it was eye opening and thinking, oh, wow, we can finally have this native way to transact on the internet and enable creators to make money, to engage with fans, to have their community without these intermediaries, middlemen that take these massive cuts. So that's actually what got me excited about Bitcoin in the early days. And then I wondered, okay, you know, Bitcoin and its base layer has 10 minute transactions. The fees can spike up. If you want to send smaller values, how do we do that? Well, lo and behold, the technology that we're working on Lightning enables instant transactions with very low fees. Very scalable. You can do many thousands of transactions per second. And this is an ideal way to actually enable this new creator economy. So in fact, my love of music and my interest in enabling this native transaction layer over the internet is what actually got me to work on this in the first place. One thing I like to think about is with photos, right? Today, it's really easy to send a photo on the internet to anybody, um, you know, in any application. Imagine if in order to send a photo to India or Argentina, you had to wait days and use a different format. That's how value and money on the internet works today. And that does not work for creators in that there's so many barriers and so many intermediaries. Um, so the goal with Lightning is to really have this native transaction layer to make it as easy as sending a photo as it is to send value on the internet and to empower creators to do so. That is, that's great. And uh, we see all that development activity firsthand uh, as investors. So great to see that. Paris, um, maybe you can talk a little bit about your personal journey with crypto. Not many people probably know that you're, you've, you've been in the market for many years and then in, you're an OG. You're an OG for sure. And so, uh, and, and and maybe talk a little bit about uh, your recent interest in NFTs and, and how all that is going for you. Well, it's so good to be here today with the M13 family. And this is such an exciting conversation. I've been involved in the crypto world since around 2016. I became friends with and had dinner with the founders of Ethereum and it was just fascinated what they were telling me about this and really saw it as the future. And then back in March of 2020, I was approached uh, to do a charity initiative and do my first NFT. And we launched that 100% for charity. And I just saw really this new exciting way to release art. And I've always loved, loved digital art. And I love that it really gives the power back to the creator. Because even you know, in the traditional art world, it was all about being able to get into that you know, exhibit that was happening or work with that art dealer. And then after you would sell something, you would never see anything in the secondary market. And now with this technology, these artists will be receiving what they deserve for the rest of time. And I just think that's so amazing with the blockchain and everything that's happening, that this power is really going to the creator, you know, who deserves it because they're the ones who are creating these. Yeah, I mean, that is uh, that the business model innovation that is enabled by uh, by the blockchain is something that I don't think it's enough, uh, enough attention uh, when people talk about NFTs. Um, and I think we, we can only start to really understand some of the implications. And then what's also really cool, Paris, is that you are across mediums. And so there's 
obviously the kind of art as we know it. And then, you know, there's also, um, you know, music and uh, we've seen some really interesting things happening there. Do you foresee yourself potentially uh, expanding your NFT strategy beyond just, um, you know, the, the more traditional digital art? Definitely. I was so proud with my first drop with Blake Catherine that we had the highest selling female comp in history. So that was amazing. Just breaking the ceiling for women in the industry and women creators. And there's so much more to do. I'm working on my next drop right now. The first one was focused on art, but I do so many things. So the next ones are going to be more involved in the fashion world and also music. So I just feel with this, really the possibilities are endless and there's so many things to do. This is just the beginning and I just can't wait to continue doing this and really just be a voice and use my platform to spread this all around the world. That's great. Uh, Elizabeth, why don't we talk a little bit more about um, some of the more interesting things you're seeing on, on Lightning that's happening. Um, uh, clearly we've seen stuff of the, the, the government of El Salvador, that's not really the creator economy, but just tremendously impactful. Um, any, anything on the creator side that you're seeing that's really interesting that's being, that's happening? Yeah, I mean, what we've seen is an explosion of creativity lately, which has been incredible. Um, so the goal with Lightning is to make it really easy for anybody to build on Bitcoin and build this native value layer on the internet. And for example, uh, a good friend of ours, uh, Crypto Graffiti, who's also a house DJ, Paris, I know you're a DJ and my future career is hopefully also a DJ, <laughs> which I often say to my DJ friends and I'm like, I have a startup. Um, he did this very cool experiment where he had a DJ set in front of the Mint in San Francisco and they were streaming lightning payments and they were actually split. So you were able to split it amongst the producer of the track and then the DJ. So we had these new models for monetization, compensation of artists and creators. So definitely check out uh, Crypto's Graffiti's work around split payments there. Um, there's also this concept of streaming sats as we call it. So Satoshis are the lowest denomination of Bitcoin, one 100 millionth of a Bitcoin, currently about three hundredths of a cent. Um, it, yeah, it's gone way up in the last couple of years. And the community is getting really interested in this idea of being able to stream payments to creators. So there's some great things going on in the podcasting world. Um, Adam Curry, if the pod father, the father of podcasting has spearheaded a lot of very cool initiatives around podcasts. We've seen Twitch streaming. A community member named Fitty Boy created a lightning uh, strip Twitch plugin that goes into OBS, which is the software used to stream on Twitch. So people can stream payments that way. Um, there's a group called Lightning Store that's done interesting things around streaming sats and music. Uh, the video game community is currently blowing up Zebedee, Satoshi's games. We saw um, Donner Lab. We saw at uh, Bitcoin 2021, over 50,000 transactions over two days in gaming tournaments. So really, uh, the possibilities here for the creator economy are both endless and, and just getting started. Oh, scarce.city um, is doing lightning based auctions. They have um, both physical art where people are bidding over lightning. And I know they're very interested in NFTs on Bitcoin as well. So what we've really just seen is from all sides, people are building uh, these new use cases to enable creators to have new models. And then one other area that I'm very interested in is engaging community, engaging fan bases. Um, one of our friends, Justin Resvani of N2N2 is building an app where you can actually have a lightning app on your phone and connect with creators um, both as a fan and then the creators connect back and they're able to transact and send messages over the lightning network. And then of course, cannot forget Sphinx Stop Chat, uh, the very cool application where you send and receive chat messages over lightning and you can natively embed payments. And a lot of podcasters and creators are now using this technology to actually embed sats when they're connecting with their fan bases and chatting. So I actually think we're at the beginning of new and evolving models to connect with fan bases using Bitcoin and Lightning, which I'm really excited about. And we'll see in a couple of years. Sounds like you might need to get your podcast into this. I know. Well, I'll make it happen. And I'll yeah. DJ soon, hopefully. Definitely. One of the things I've been really excited by on the music side is this idea that, you know, artists have been basically forced to go on tour because that's the only way that they can um, make money and, and put food on the table. And the idea that you can have these NFTs, these really unique um, collections that you can have patrons that 
can pay you a, a significant amount of money, but for that, you can give away a bunch of other stuff for free. You can um, decide to tour when you want, not when you have to. And so it just, I think the economic empowerment element is really, really, um, is really exciting. And so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Paris, can we, what, what can we expect from you in terms of, you know, social tokens? Are, is there going to be a Paris token at some point we can all participate in? I mean, I know you're always ahead of the curve, so. Yes, we've actually been discussing that for a while now, so you'll be seeing that very soon. Um, and I think that's just such a new and exciting thing as well. And I love being able to do that for my fans and also with NFTs offer experiences and really, you know, just be there for my fans in so many different ways that wasn't possible before. So it's, it's very exciting. And I'm also doing curating an all female art exhibit on seven grant foundation. And it's called Empowered by Paris, Empowered Women, Empower Women. And it's just been incredible just seeing all of these really incredible female artists submitting their work. And now I've just been curating and looking through just hundreds and hundreds of them. So soon I will have the art exhibit up. Great, that, that is, that's great to hear. Um, we've got a few more minutes. I'd love to talk a little bit about, like it's, it's really exciting what's happening in the NFT market and, and, the, uh, and in Bitcoin and in the creator economy. But what is it going to take um, from where we are today, which is still, you know, kind of an experiment. Although I did see that four million Americans have bought an NFT, which is remarkable. I think, uh, and most of them, most of them happened in, in the last six months. If you think about it, there's roughly forty million Americans that own Bitcoin, uh, and that's been over a ten-year span. So, the acceleration of adoption is 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 happening very quickly. But we're still early days. So. Um, Elizabeth, maybe you can talk a little bit about like what's it going to take in order to open up uh, more applications to consumers. It's still like, you know, crypto is still this kind of tough to understand, crazy thing. People like Paris are obviously making a huge, um, a, a huge contribution in terms of opening up access. But I'd love to hear a little bit more about about what we need to do to. Increase. Yeah, I mean, it is it's still early days. And I know people say, oh, well, it was early days a couple of years ago. But if you think about the evolution of the internet, right, 1969 was the first, uh, was the birth of the internet, actually, the ARPANET. And it wasn't until the 90s that it even really got mainstream with the invention of the World Wide Web. So in the early days, you know, with Bitcoin, especially crypto, um, you had the concept of the asset, people invested, you know, Paris, I know you were, you were buying Bitcoin and ETH back then. Um, and that's interesting. And there are a lot of use cases there, store value, people in economies with hyperinflation or where governments might confiscate things, human rights implications. Um, my good friend Alex Gladstein over at the Human Rights Foundation is working with a lot of activists. But um, to me, that's only uh, the, the beginning and the first part. And the idea of being able to have this value network, monetary network, um, where you can transact and natively embed value on the internet is so exciting. And that's really, to me, where the creator economy starts blowing up. So the creators of the web, Tim Berners-Lee in the early 90s, they actually envisioned that you would be able to transact on the internet natively. Um, people may have heard of 404, uh, the error code not found. There was actually a 402, there still is, payment required for the web. So back then, the idea was you were going to be able to have this native way to transact, but the technology just wasn't there yet. So fast forward to today, we've seen the evolution, you know, 2009, the Bitcoin network launches. That was Bitcoin, the asset. Then we move forward with what we're doing with Lightning Network. You know, we have Bitcoin, the monetary network and the ability to natively have these transactions. And we're several years in. Um, 2018 was really the first mainnet version of what we're doing with Lightning, the, the layer two, the scalable transaction layer. Um, but again, equivalent to the early days of the internet. So we've seen now hundreds of applications building on this technology. Um, I know in, in a variety of other spaces around NFTs, it's just early. Like there are, uh, the 4 million stat is interesting, but in many cases, people are likely using applications that might be, um, they're using credit cards or there may be ways in which it's quote unquote custodial and there are risks around that. So um, I think we need to get to a point where things are more usable. Usability is a key 
part here to make it easy, make it more accessible. And that's something that I'm incredibly passionate about. Branching up access in terms of the global emerging markets, really getting people of all walks of life on board to this technology is key. Um, and just really evolving the technology to make it so that it's solving real problems and both helping creators and helping the broader population. Um, Paris, anything that, to, to close off on? Any, any final thoughts as we wrap up here? Just, I'm so excited to be with you guys here today and I'm gonna continue just spreading the word around and yeah, I just wanted to send my love to the whole community. I've met some of those brilliant and creative and kind and just, just amazing people in this community and have made so many friends. So I'm just really grateful to have met everyone and I'm excited for the future of this. Well, it's a real real treat to be on this uh, digital meeting with you both and keep doing, keep doing what you're doing. I think the big takeaway for me is we need to have a crypto in the creator music festival or something, right? And I'll DJ, but Paris, also you're so hooked into the community. I love it, you know, on Discord, engaging with people, Clubhouse, Twitter. And that's really what this is all about. It's about community and it's about building those bonds and relations. And to me, that's what makes you a true OG. So thanks for being oh, involved. Oh geez, thank you so much to both of you. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.